powers of my side Along with the town's pride It's nothing but one eye Let the action begin One bounce and it's all on Kick it, you're hot son If we get the first goal I know we can win The best on the border To battle for honor The Alvin's and Marines For the country This is the real thing The Cowboys are cheering The Alvin's and Marines Welcome to the latest edition of Behind the Play with SSNA coming again from uh, the Prime 7 studios in Lavington. Uh, joining us once again, Phil Pryor from Prime 7 and Robbie McKinlay. Boys, another big week. Uh, Phil, huge effort, uh, probably the, the biggest round in uh, country footy. Wow, wasn't it just? It was, um, it was unbelievable. The, the build-up and uh, the anticipation was enormous and uh, Paddy Rose and Brendan Favola certainly lived up to the hype. Yeah, they slugged it out and it took uh, well into the... Last quarter, Phil, to get it there, both to get their hundred and then to get a Doug Strang medalist, and it came right at the end. And just obviously the one goal there, the difference in the end, Paddy Rose uh, getting over line, uh, 101 goals for the season. Uh, Fev uh, just uh, nudging the ton and, and calling it a day after that. Yeah, well, uh, there's certainly a bit of an injury concern for Fev, mm. uh, a knee which he did early in the first quarter, and um, and I've been through most of the vision from that game today, and. Uh, yeah, he was he was pretty sore out there. He was he, was pre he pretty much kicked uh, his five goals on on one leg after uh, after he'd obviously kicked that early one. So uh, yeah, definitely a concern there, and hopefully the scans are, aren't too worrying. Well, actually, it looked like been a tie for the Doug Strang medal because when Paddy Rose got his hundredth goal at about the twenty fifth, twenty sixth minute mark of the final term, and he'd actually been struggling with distance all day. And he had a shot from outside 50 right against the boundary and he just nailed one of Jonathan Thurston style, brought the ball back. It was and an he, absolute crack. He came from nowhere to kick it actually and it was, I think he'd broken the shackles and bang, he unloaded. It's the longest kick I've seen him do all year. So got him up. Anyway, we'll touch on all that uh, game a bit later on. Uh, first, we'll head into the wrap of uh, round 18. It was the tale of two terrific talents, both aiming to reach their goal kicking tons in the last round. Yarrawonga star Brendan Favola got there first, kicking six for the afternoon. And an honourable mention goes to Fev's little helper Craig Edney as the Pigeons had a comfortable win by 68 points. About 10 minutes after Fev got there, so did Raiders star Paddy Rose on the other side of the region. Rose had Ben Davies in assistance at Myrtleford as the Raiders star finished with 101 season goals and the Strang medal. The Saints going down by seven goals. The Wang Rovers struck the first blow heading into their qualifying showdown with the Tigers, beating Aubrey at home by seven points. The Bulldogs finished the year on a high in sixth, too strong for the Magpies, 97 to 64, and the Panthers cruised to a victory over Coral Rutherglen down at John Ford Oval. Big winners, 18 goals, 9, 117 to 6 goals, 8, 44. So with the home and away season out of the way, it now leaves the ladder at the end of uh, round 18. Yarrawonga 66, Rovers 60. Aubrey 52, Lavington 46, Raiders round out the top five with 40. After that, it's a, a fair gap. Woodonga on 24, Wangaratta 20, Coral Rutherglen 20, Saints on 16, and North Aubrey with the wooden spoon also on 16 there. So we, we have, a, uh, have a wooden spoon winner too, so probably not what North Aubrey wanted to finish their season on, but uh, had to happen to someone. But anyway, we'll uh, jump into uh, round 18 and have a bit closer look at the games. Uh, Phil, I guess, kick us off there. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, Fev uh, got out to a, a blistering start, kicked his first one uh, in the first few minutes out at uh, JC Low Oval, but then went went quiet for for the first quarter and and didn't come to life until sort of maybe ten minutes into the second quarter. He's uh, he snapped one uh, on off one leg pretty much, and and that that got him going. He kicked uh, he kicked most of them. Well, I think it was yeah, he kicked uh, four in that second quarter. I think Craig Edney probably assisted three of those. He was. Unbelievable the way that those two work together and obviously Craig Edney just, he, he looks in, in absolute devastating form as well. But um, as we mentioned earlier, the, the injury concern is, is a concern for Fev, but uh, he was just unstoppable out there, even, you know, well below his best. Mm. And uh, yeah, and that second quarter was most of the damage and then he, he finally got it done in the fourth quarter early and he was straight off the ground after that. 
Yeah, well, I spoke the inter- at, up at Myrtleford. Um, Raiders were very inaccurate earlier. At quarter time, they were eight behinds. Uh, Paddy Rose had kicked three of those behinds. And he, yeah, he wasn't kicking his normal self. And then in the second quarter, he kicked two goals. He had two goals four at half time. He kicked one early in the third. And then it had a bit of a drought for a while. And the, as the word had come through that Fev was sitting on 99, and then Fev had got the 100. And then Paddy Rose, he's, his 99th was a, one of his best goals. Then his 100th was a nice pass from Stretton. 40 metres out, beautiful kick. And, and like I said before, he's 101st to win the Doug Strang. is one of the goals of the year. But uh, interesting enough, I reckon uh, Benny Davies... He probably could have kicked seven or eight goals for the day. He, I don't know how many times he did little short chip passes to um, Paddy Rose from about sometimes no, not even 15 metres. But yeah, he had a lot of the ball. But just keep your eye out for it. The goal of the day came from the last kick of the day. Joel Coombs, he let go of a barrel from 60 metres out after the siren. Torpedo punt, bang, straight through the goals. Actually, Michael Stevens did the same thing up at Yarrawonga and, and it's almost been forgotten about. He, Steve, I kicked one from about 60 out as well. And... Uh, yeah. It absolutely threw, flew through, and, and even Fev down in the goal square, he's sitting on 99 goals, and even he had to sit there and applaud because, you know, at that point everyone's like, oh, one, you kick it to Fev, but Steve-O, yeah, he put yeah. one similar through as well. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Good to see the barrel back. <laughs> a few more in the finals. Uh, obviously, a few other games to touch on there, some uh, crucial ones with, uh, obviously, uh, reports coming out of them as well. Um, Lavington, Corowa and uh, Aubrey and Wang, Wang Rovers. So uh, some uh, crucial points there. Obviously, uh, Garland and Sargent out of uh, the lavington Corowa game and Josh Murray out of uh, uh, Wang Rovers versus Aubrey. Yeah, I suppose, um, just to touch on the Rovers-Tigers game, very good game of footy for more reports. Uh, only seven points in it. Wang Rovers got the points. Don't think uh, Danny Stevens um, or Daniel Murray would be too disappointed. They've got uh, Michael Thompson, Sean and Luke Daly and Andy Kerry to come back in. Andy Hill will come back in for the Wangaratta Rovers. So I think Aubrey will probably be a little bit stronger next week. But that's a good head out for those guys. I suppose the only concern is obviously the report of uh, Josh Maher. So, but yeah, that, that is a really good advertiser for this week's qualifying final down at Burley Park. Will be one of the games of the year, no doubt about it. And it was a close finish too. So, mm. you know, Wang Rovers got the win. Um, but I, I don't think too, either team takes too much momentum no. away from this weekend. No real loser out of that one. Yeah, so... And the final uh, game of the round two, obviously uh, Woodonga getting over Wang Rovers, a bit of a, a dead rubber there, but uh, good uh, good signs for Woodonga to finish off the season a win uh, win for them. So um, they'll head into next year with a bit of confidence. Uh, obviously, look at uh, a bit of recruiting over the off season. Uh, same with Wangaratta. So. Um, that's uh, that's it from round 18, and I guess we'll just touch on a few things there with our uh, Blow My Whistle segment. Uh, first, guys, without a doubt, uh, star of the show, the two of them, and we've probably touched on it as much as we can, but uh, Fev and Rose, without a doubt, uh, both getting the ton. Phil, is it the f- uh, I think it's be the first time two players have brought up 100 on the same day, and incredibly within about 10 minutes of each other. I, I, I don't know, you've been doing a little bit of research today. I, I don't know if that would have happened before, would it? Yeah, um, certainly not on the same day, uh, but uh, yeah, can't confirm whether or not mm. two players have done it in the same season. But you know, probably worth mentioning that uh, yeah, Rose played all eighteen games. Fev, I think that was only game number fourteen, yep. and yep. and I think that equals um, a record of the quickest uh, huh. games to bring up a hundred. So yeah, not a bad effort by Fev, and you know, not a bad effort by Rose either. Shit, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on, yeah, a turning point, uh, Fev's injury. Um, what will that mean for the Pigeons for the rest of the season? Will, will it uh, you know, leave him out or, or will he play? Yeah, well, he's got a week off. Uh, obviously, to, to nest it, he'll go and have scans. Um, so uh, he, he's also he, he, planning on going over to that wedding over in Italy, but mm. he's put those on hold, which is the respect to Fev there. He's doing Absolutely. all the right things. Yeah. Um, yep. And, uh, yeah, so fingers crossed the, the scans come out okay but i mean you know even even if there is a bit of a concern he, he still managed to kick five goals after he did after he did the injury on saturday so depending on how much it swells up he might even go and do it anyway uh next one on the the card out of the woodwork and uh this one we've uh been willing them along all year <laughs> and they finally got there the Wodonga raiders uh a grade netballer netballers uh got uh, their first win of the season in the last round of the year so Fantastic effort for them, and uh, they would have celebrated pretty hard, I'd imagine. Well, I'm not sure what happened up there. The Merleford ladies had a pink day there for breast cancer up there. There was 130 of them uh, decked out in the club rooms, and the club rooms looked fantastic. 
Now, I'm not sure if the Myrtleford netballs got on the champagne a little bit early before they went on the court against the girls. Nothing against the Raiders girls, but no. Good on them. They played really well. And they, actually, that game finished pretty early, so the girls from both sides had the opportunity to go back upstairs and get back into it. So, yeah, well done. We, we, no one likes to see a side go for a fair to win, and they showed great character. And, well, Phil, you took the baseball bat out. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, Back to our, their two, Fev and uh, Rose, uh, the play of the day, obviously. I don't think we need to touch on it. Uh, so, without a doubt, the highlights of uh, around 18. So, Play of the day is those two 60-metre barrels. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> From yeah. Stevens and um, Joel Coombs. Why not? Oh, well, yep. We've bumped it at the long, right, <laughs> yeah. last section. So, anyway, uh, some big games coming up this weekend. Obviously, the two, two uh, Lavington versus Raiders and, and Rovers and Albury, some big ones there. Um, Lavington Raiders it looks like it'll be a pretty close one as well. Yeah, well, uh, I haven't been around in this region for too many years, but I can't imagine many bigger elimination finals mm. in, in the o and I mean, both of these teams can beat anyone on their day. Mm. They've both beaten Aubrey. Um, Lavington obviously drew with Yarrawonga in round one. At their best, they're both capable of winning the premiership. There's no doubt about that, but one of them's going to be uh, season over this weekend, which is a yeah. little bit, you know, strange, I suppose. A couple of injury concerns for the Raiders. Um, Daniel Cassidy did a knee on the weekend. I'm not sure how serious, but I, I don't think uh, he'll play a game this season. Corey Lambert wasn't very confident after the game. And Dean Hedder went off with a groin injury. Now, the injury happened in the second quarter, not long before half-time, so because he came off before half-time and almost a 20-minute break at, at half-time again, they decided to ice him up. So I think Dean Hedder will play this week, no problem, but um, there's a little bit of a concern there. Raiders are really missing Ed Prado. If they had Prado alongside Rose, they could do anything. So, yeah, but I, I think Lavi's depth might just get him over the line. Your tip, Phil? Yeah, I, I think I'll go Lavi only because they've beaten them twice this year, and, um, and yeah, I, th I think... The, the reasons that we've obviously touched on uh, after those games is, yeah, while they'll get over the line again. Mm. And uh, obviously the rematch around 18, Rovers and Albury um, in Wodonga, um, interesting one as well. Yeah, look, I, I just we've touched on it before that um, Albury have probably got a few more players to come back. The upside for Albury this week is probably a little bit more. Um, both sides sort of obviously fell themselves out. Yeah, I, I think... This game, really, it's a very intriguing one. Both, both sides uh, play fairly similar sort of a game. Um, Andy Curry and, I think, and Barry Hall, they're the two big, strong key forwards. are going to play a big part. If Luke Daly comes back nice and fit and with no concern with that knee injury, he's a very underrated player for Aubrey. And so is Daniel McCulloch, who plays the same role for Wangaratta Rovers. Really good game, this one. I reckon it'll go two goals either way. Probably just go with the Tigers. How do you feel? Yeah, well, I don't. Will the, those young hawks be able to settle down now that it's finals time? Uh, hard to say. And for that reason, I think Aubrey, with that finals experience, might just be too good this weekend. We'll wait and see. Anyway, um, touching on the netball now in a, a big weekend, uh, rounding out the season, made a bit more of movement in the uh, top five as well, which is uh, good to see. It hasn't been set yet, so it, until this weekend, it uh, moved up and down. But anyway, we're looking at it, uh, Wodonga with a big win over Wangaratta to finish out the home and away season and, and uh, get them to third place on the ladder, which is good to see. Yarrawonga and North Orry pro probably would have been uh, looking as uh, a big uh, big game heading into finals mm. and Yarrawonga just far too easy, 28 goals there, so 68 goals to North uh, 40. Uh, Lavington versus Cora Rutherglen, uh, two sides at opposite ends of the ladder and Lavington just got the job done, they'll have the week off now. Uh, Rovers and Aubrey. This was the game that was going to decide uh, the finals positions on the ladder and uh, Rovers came out mm. of the box and absolutely blitzed Aubrey so they would have had a fantastic, uh, uh, I guess, win for them and, and looking forward to, to finals now. Jess Clark, 37 goals. Um, fantastic effort, Phil. Yeah, well, uh, I, I thought um, heading into this game maybe um, Aubrey had been in super form but I think it was just that that crunch, they'd come from so mm. far from yeah. last season to here and, and maybe it was just uh, too much for them in the end. The Rovers, obviously, they've been a very good netball team for a few years. So, um, yeah, not, not, not a real surprise down in Wangaratta there, I suppose. I think for me, the, the surprise, obviously, Raiders aside, that game didn't mean too much, Raiders-Saints, but the big surprise was the 28-goal difference at Yarrawonga because mm. North Albury have been in some super form and... Uh, and Yarrawonga, they, they're back to their best at the right time of the season by the, by the sounds oh, of it. Look at that, Steph Tyrrell, 41, mm. Bridget Tate, 27. 
Last quarter was something like 23 to 9. So, yeah, ominous signs, I think, for the pigeonettes, whatever we call them. <laughs> and obviously the final game we touched on before, Raiders uh, getting a six-goal win over the Saints. So good, good effort well done, for girls. to finish the season. So, as we said, a bit of movement on that uh, ladder. Leaves it uh, with Lavington on 64. They'll have the week off. Yarrawonga, 52, will play Wodonga, who finished the season 46. And Rovers uh, on 44, along with North, play off this weekend. Aubrey just missed out uh, on 40 points. Uh, the Saints, 28. Wangaratto, 20. Coral Rutherglen, 18. And Raiders now without the donut. Uh, <laughs> they get a four for the end of the season. So fantastic effort for them. And uh, some big games coming up too, as we mentioned. Obviously, Rovers and North Aubrey. I don't think there's too much uh, in between these two sides. Uh, I think if you were tipping this one a week ago, you would probably looked at North Aubrey, but both sides have completely reversed their form. Rovers had a fantastic win. North have been a little bit down after playing Yarra. Although the experience in just playing a quality side like Yarrawonga, it's not going to be that hard next week. They might benefit really close. I reckon North will bounce back and grab a win. Yeah, I'm with you there, Robbie. Anyway, the, the final game too, obviously Yarrawonga and uh, Wodonga. Look, I, I'd have to tip Yarrawonga here. I think um, just the, their form's been fantastic. Wodonga have had... Got a few wins on the board late in the season, yeah. but they, they were a bit patchy there at, uh, at a few stages. Yeah, you'd have to be a real punter to take Wodonga in this one. Um, but in saying that... Some would say a fool, Phil. <laughs> no, well, in saying that, <laughs> Wodonga are one team that have uh, troubled the best in the last couple of seasons. Uh, they took the Pigeons right to the end on grand final day last year. Yeah. And, uh, and Wodonga, they're, they're one team that know how to step up in yeah. the finals. So... So I think that's so probably... So you keeping him, Phil? No. Oh. <laughs> but, if, but if there was one team that could potentially cause an upset against Yarrawonga this week, I think it would be Wodonga. I can't believe it took you so long to say Yarrawonga. <laughs> <laughs> I think regardless, Wodonga will be playing next week. Yeah, and I they're think, a good um, side. Yeah. Um, regardless of who they do play next week, they'll, uh, they'll uh, cause a stir. So plenty of uh, great games of footy and netball to come up uh, in the first week of finals this week. Obviously, um, both games are in Wodonga, at Wodonga and Birrawee Park, so um, get along to them. It'll be fantastic footy and netball, and uh, it should be a great weekend. I think hey, what about the forecast for yeah, the weekend? fantastic. I think 18, 19 yeah, degrees. So sensational. Yeah. Won't complain Love about finals that. footy. Yeah, we didn't love it on Sunday, Phil. You yeah, no. Nah, boys got rolled? No, nah, no luck on Sunday, but I've... A congratulations to you. I thought that was a fantastic call down at Myrtleford. Oh, uh, thanks, Phil. You've really got the blood boiling as uh, Rose kick yeah. goal number 100 and 101. So uh, that well that done, Robbie. Year, play that time play year of the get, day. Oh, thanks, mate. That's that time of year to get excited. Well, it doesn't take to get, much, get me going much. So <laughs> look out for big finals. So that's it from us for another week uh, with Behind the Play with SSNA. Thanks again to the SSNA club for supporting us all year. Plenty of things going on at the club. Get along. John Stevens this week should be a great night. Mm. I will be there. Maybe. Ooh, 80s yeah. music, right? I think Corey will be there. Fuck oh, yeah. You're Grew mate? up with John Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> we might get the old band back. That's it. Anyway, we'll stop talking now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> moving along. We'll catch you next week. The